Hello everyone. As promised, I will be starting a series on the defense of Sihang Warehouse. There are many misconceptions and false information about this battle, and during my research, I've even come across official sources and reputable websites that have gotten some of the facts wrong. In this series, I intend to clear up some of the more common misconceptions about this battle and provide people with a clear picture of what really happened at Sihang Warehouse in 1937. The battle for Shanghai would be the first major battle between Central Chinese forces and the Japanese forces. Commencing in August, the fighting had been so fierce that some historians would later refer to it as China's Stalingrad. When describing the Battle of Shanghai, the nationalist general Feng Yuxiang recalled, "Every day, we sent division after division into battle. Some suffered 50% casualties after three hours." Others lost two thirds of their men after five. The battlefield was like a furnace, where after sending a unit in, it would immediately melt away. However, as time progressed, things were not looking good for Chinese troops. The Japanese were able to successfully conduct amphibious landings around Shanghai, and by late September, the town of Luodian had fallen. A month later. On October twenty-sixth, Japanese troops managed to push Chinese units out of the town of Dachang. At this point, all Chinese units in Shanghai were at risk of being encircled and had to retreat immediately. The leader of the Republic of China, General Li Smo Chiang Kai-shek, decided to leave the eighty-eighth division behind in Shanghai. This was supposedly to cover the retreat of other units from Shanghai, but more importantly. It was to put on a show for the Western nations, many of whom had foreign concessions in Shanghai. Chiang Kai-shek knew that the Western powers had decided to hold a conference in Brussels, Belgium, in November of that year, known as the Nine Powers Treaty Conference. The purpose of this conference was for Western powers to decide on how to peacefully end the conflict between China and Japan. Chiang wanted to show them China's determination in the fight. In hopes of getting recognition and aid, and for this he was ready to sacrifice the entire 88th Division. The 88th had set out from Wuxi in mid-August towards Shanghai. By October, they had already been fighting in Shanghai for over two months, and as a result, had suffered high casualty rates. Since many of the original troops had been killed, many of the soldiers were now replacements from different units. Even so. It was still an extremely formidable fighting force. Gu Zhutong, the overall commander of the Third Military Region, which included Shanghai, did not appreciate the idea of sacrificing an entire German-trained, reorganized division for the sake of politics. After conferring with Sun Yuanliang, the commander of the 88th Division, it was decided to leave behind only a regiment. Sun Yuanliang decided to further decrease the size of the unit from a regiment to a battalion, and on the evening of October 26th, Sun Yuanliang gave the order for the first battalion of the 524th Regiment to move towards their new positions. It was decided for the first battalion to defend the divisional headquarters of the 88th, located at Sihang Warehouse. Prior to this, the first battalion, along with other units from the 524th Regiment, Had been guarding the area around Shanghai North Railway Station, which was just to the northeast of Sihang Warehouse. Sun Yuanliang also ordered the recently promoted Deputy Regiment Commander of the 524th Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Xie Jingyuan, to join the first battalion at Sihang Warehouse. Lieutenant Colonel Xie will be the highest-ranking officer present during the battle. Another important officer who was present is the first battalion commander, Major Yang Ruifu. Although his role is often overshadowed by the higher-ranking Lieutenant Colonel Xie, Major Yang would play an equally important, if not more important, role during the battle. Since Lieutenant Colonel Xie had recently been promoted to the position of Deputy Regiment Commander, many of the troops did not know him that well. Major Yang had a much better knowledge of his unit, and according to some first-hand accounts. He would often be the one giving orders during the battle that was to come. The first battalion consisted of three infantry companies as well as a machine gun company. Altogether, there were over four hundred men within the first battalion. The commanders of these companies were 
First Company Commander Captain Shang Guan Zhibiao, Second Company Commander Captain Deng Yun, Third Company Commander Captain Shi Mei Hao, later Captain Tang Di after Captain Shi was seriously wounded during battle, and finally Machine Gun Company Commander Captain Lei Xiong. There is often some confusion about who the actual commander of First Company is, and a platoon commander by the name of Tao Xing Chun is often incorrectly listed as the actual First Company commander. Even by some official sources, other sources suggest that Captain Shang Guan was in fact the executive officer of the unit. In reality, Tao Xing Chun was only the temporary acting company commander early on in the battle, while the actual company commander of First Company is Captain Shang Guan. I will explain the reason for this mix-up in the next video. Sihang Warehouse was chosen due to its construction and strategic location. Located in the Jiabei District, it sat on the northern banks of the Suzhou Creek and was built in the early 30s by four different banks, which explains why its name, when translated to English, means the Four Banks Warehouse. Other English names include the Joint Trust Warehouse, as well as the Chinese Mint Godown. It consisted of two adjacent buildings that were constructed of steel and concrete. And was six stories tall, meaning it towered over the other buildings around it. The walls were extremely thick, meaning they provided excellent protection against small arms fire and, to an extent, artillery fire. Multiple roads also ran along the area of Sihang Warehouse. North of the warehouse lies Guoqing Road, while Xizang Road, also known as Tibet Road, ran east of the warehouse. There was a bridge along Tibet Road that crossed the Suzhou Creek. Known as Lazi Bridge or Lusso Bridge, south of the warehouse, running between the warehouse and the Suzhou Creek, was the North Suzhou Creek Road, also known as Guangfu Road. Manzhou Road lay to the west. Another advantage that the warehouse provided for the defenders was that it was located right beside the foreign concessions. Everything east and south of the warehouse was part of the international settlement. Meaning everything that goes on around the warehouse will be visible to Western powers. Many sources will state that only the land south of the warehouse belonged to the international settlement, and that Japanese forces attacked from three directions. A look at a period map of the area reveals that Tibet Road, as well as everything east of it, was within the international settlement. Since Japanese troops cannot attack through the international concession, this meant. That their attacks can only come from the north and the west. Furthermore, Japanese forces had to take care not to accidentally provoke incidents with the international concession, as they did not want the Western powers to get involved in the war. This meant that they had to be extremely careful with artillery fire as well as airstrikes, so as to not damage structures within the international settlement, such as the natural gas storage tanks of the Shanghai Gas Company. A hit from a stray bomb or shell to the structure could have caused heavy damage to the international settlement. The next image, taken from the walkway of one of these tanks, shows its proximity to the warehouse. Japanese troops were also unable to use chemical weapons around Sihang Warehouse like they did in other areas of Shanghai, out of fear that they would be spotted by Western powers, and that the gas could accidentally drift into the international concession. The 88th Division had decided to set up its divisional headquarters at the warehouse due to the advantages and protection that it offered. For the same reason, it was decided that this was the structure that First Battalion would defend. Late in the evening of the 26th of October and early in the morning of the 27th, units of the First Battalion, scattered along the front lines, started making their way towards the Hong Warehouse. The stage was now set. For an epic battle that would be remembered for years to come.